Welcome back to Boring Build Friday. Some parts came in for our basket case Corvette, so it's time to put it back together. If you don't know why it's a basket case, link's up there, get you caught up. So, let's get some parts on it so we can see if everything fits and get it ready for the painting gnomes. So the upper bumper support bracket is the first part we're waiting for. Couple bolts across the front. The hood release cable clips into it. And the little plastic clips are a lot stronger than the bracket itself. Kind of mangled the bracket trying to get them off. Good thing we're throwing it in the pile. In the pile. So then we got a new bracket. Just slides in there. There's some studs on the fenders. Slides over those. Bolts to the top of the reinforcement. Clip our cables back in there. Bolt to the reinforcement. Bolt it to the fender. There is an adjustment in the center, so we'll just tighten that up. And we'll dig through our magical box of parts. Yeah, that looks the same. Let's use this one. Cut our tag off. So if you look, this wheel is in a little bit at the top, and because I didn't take it apart, I didn't put it back together the right way. I got some washers that are on the wrong side of the control arm, so we're just going to have to take the upper control arm off, put the washers on the inside to pull the wheel out where they belong. I checked the other side, and that's how they go. So you can see these two washers here. They belong on the other side of the control arm. Like that. I already loosened this side up, switched the washers onto the other side. We'll see what it looks like when I get done. That looks a lot better. Don't mind the crack on the floor, the car's not parked straight on it. But it's straight up and down now, just like it should be. We all make mistakes. No big deal. Easy fix. I kind of expected more. There still might be more. We're not done yet. It's all part of learning. So now back to something I know how to do. We're gonna put the headlight in. Take the little bracket off the end of the fender for the bumper, slide our headlight in. Bolt the headlight down. And put our bracket back in. Now there's another bracket for the end of the fender. We're waiting for this too. So now we can put our bumper on, make sure it fits. Slide it over all of our brackets. It's nice using OEM bumpers, they fit. Use our bumper installation tool to clip it in. There's a couple bolts across the top for that upper bumper support. Close the hood and see how it looks. Got a nice gap across the front. So we got our nice gaps across the front of the hood. It's a little bit high right here, but that's just an adjustment on this bracket. I loosen up those two screws and I can move it down. Uh, so that'll be perfect. I have to take it off anyway so the painting gnomes can get in there and tape it off and paint it. So now we're going to pull everything back apart and turn it over to them. Uh, I think we're going to pull this wheel off just so we can send it out and have it reconditioned. It's got some scrapes and nicks on it so we're going to have it all painted up. So 
So we'll pull the bumper back off. Unbolt the top bracket again. These are the wrong bolts. I just threw them in there real quick. I found the right ones in here. I'll just unclip the bumper. Wiggle and pull. It seemed to unclip really well, except for right above the right headlight. That bracket was fighting me. Hopefully the next time we put it on is the last time. Now you can pull our headlight out. Slide it out of there. Managed to get it out without taking that bracket off. Still haven't figured out how to get it in with the bracket on there though. That's that bracket. Now it's adjusted. So I'll adjust that bracket just to make sure there is enough adjustment on it. Now we jack the car up so we can pull our tire off. our little donut on there. These things are universal. I wouldn't suggest driving them down the road, but they'll move it around the shop. It's a little too close to our caliper, so we're gonna put some washers in there. A couple of washers. Give us just enough clearance so we don't destroy our caliper. washers on the outside so our lug nuts don't pull through. Make sure it's not hitting anything. Now we'll set it down on a 2x4 so we can get our jack out. So I charged the battery. I've been dreading this moment because this is where the build could go bad. It's been pretty easy so far, aside from having to lay out parts and figure out where everything goes that I didn't take off. It's gone pretty smooth, but I haven't tried to start it yet. If I left anything disconnected up there, I could end up having to take a lot of that back apart to reconnect wires, reroute wires, whatever. So there's only one way to find out, and that's to start it up and see if we have any codes or lights on. So it's kind of like Schrodinger's Corvette. Everything's plugged in or nothing's plugged in. We don't know until we start it. The car has 16,000 miles on it because people asked because it looked pretty clean and it's also from Florida so that helps too but everything looks good we can keep going. Now I don't have to be scared anymore. So we have to pull the vent out of the hood. There's a cover on the back held in with two screws and it just clips in. Pop it off of there. I'm going to pull the hood insulation down a little bit. Just pull it.
pull out one of the retainers and then it clips in in the front so we'll just slide it out of there just so we can get in get the clips loose for the vent Some of those clips sounded bad, but they all came out without breaking. Kind of nice. Now we'll pull the right headlight out. Slide it out of there. Haven't figured out how to get this one out without taking that bracket off yet, though. And why I'm fighting it, just take the bracket off. Now it comes out. Now we're going to start pulling the door apart. Pop the switch cover off, which actually didn't need to be done. But it was easy. A couple of screws on the bottom. One screw behind the door button. Fancy Corvettes are too good for door handles. One more hidden screw underneath the door pole. And we'll just pop the door panel off. Lift it off. Unplug all the harnesses in the front. And pull the door gasket off so we can get to the screw that's on the front of the belt molding. We'll pull the little mini water barrier off of here. This covers up the holes that allow us to get to the mirror bolts. Tough stuff. Should have used that to hold the inner fender on. Let me unclip our mirror wire. Feed it in the door. It's clipped in about three other places inside the door. Take a couple bolts out of our mirror. There's three. Now we gotta pull the speaker out. Just so we can get to the other clips for that wire inside the door. That speaker hole gives us plenty of access. reach in there and disconnect all the wires. Then pull the last nut off the mirror. Try not to lose it in the door. And pull the mirror off. Fish all the wires out of there. There's one of those clips. There's another one, and another. I want to make sure this wire wasn't going anywhere. At least I won't have to rust proof these doors when I put it back together. Now I'll pull the belt milling off. Just unclips until you get to the end. 
pop the door gasket off a little bit. There's one more screw in the back. Now it's off. So I've gone as far as I can go. We're waiting on the bodywork and painting gnomes. And I think I hear them coming. So I'm gonna get out of here so they can do their thing. And I'll see you guys when they're done. So like this video if you found it interesting. Share it if you think somebody else might. Subscribe to see the rest of this build or whatever else I'm working on. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon. So I asked everyone on Instagram if they wanted a build update. What happens to some of these builds after I sell them? And they said yes. So I got one for you. It's a 2006 GTO I did a while back. Link's up there to the video if you haven't seen it. That's an old one. It's one of the old time lapses with background music where I didn't explain anything. Those are the videos that I only used to sell vehicles. I would show the customer exactly what was done and explain it to them while they were looking to buy the vehicle. That's actually what sold that one. So I bought that vehicle for myself, got it back, found out somebody had been there before. So I had to fix some of the work they had done on the front end that wasn't done correctly and fix the actual accident damage from when I bought it. So I got all that done. I drove it for about six months and I really didn't care for the car. It was to replace my CTSV. Links up there if you haven't seen that one. I sold that and this wasn't the same. It was a lot of fun to drive and it had plenty of power, but it just wasn't my style. So I decided to put it up for sale. I ended up selling it because of that video. The kids saw it, had it inspected, couldn't find anything wrong with it. They couldn't even find any work that was done on it. So they took it with no problem. About six months later, a guardrail jumped out in front of it. So it took the side off the car. It needed a fender, a door, and a quarter. I was supposed to repair it, and I was waiting for him to come up with some money. But in the meantime, one of those pesky attenuators, you know, the big cushy things at the end of the center dividers, jumped out in front of it. He nailed one of those head on doing 65 miles an hour. Airbags deployed, front end crinkled up, and he walked away. Even though he wasn't wearing a seatbelt, he was just fine. So this just goes to show that a properly repaired vehicle will act just the same in an accident as a non-repaired vehicle. Now he's not the first customer I've had to crash test one of my vehicles, and I'm sure he won't be the last. I wish I had a video and I was supposed to fix it, but if he couldn't come up with the money for the first accident, he definitely wasn't coming up with the money for the second accident. And if I did repair it, I think we kind of know what would happen after that. I'd be perpetually repairing this vehicle for the rest of my life. So at some point we gotta call it quits. I guess it's here because now he's parting it out. 